I look back at my life now that I'm about to enter college, I reflect on my happiness the past 18 years. Today, people spend their whole lives searching for happiness, but in those moments, happiness was a laugh with my dad, a ride on my bike, a dance, or a shimmy, or whatever you want to call that. Happiness for me then was nothing extravagant. Now older, times have changed. My, my brother said, uh, a friend of mine uh, just, just killed himself. And you know, we come to find out that one of his friends blew his head off with a shotgun during college admission time. College is the be all end all. It is the final triumph. And for so many of us, it is anguish and despair. Nowadays, we invest so much in being happier, but when I was a kid, happiness just came naturally. If happiness is truly the end goal, then I fear for the last eight months, I've missed that point. I was not happy, and I did not seek to change what made me unhappy. I had other priorities. I was focused on college, a process that had consumed my life momentarily, but had long lasting and terrible effects on me and my state of health. I thought I would find happiness after months of torture, but I realized I needed to reach out and grab the happiness that was passing by. I had to be selfish. Is happiness a science? Can it be broken down into numbers, figures, charts? Well, I consulted with my psychologist, a man who had helped me through my hardest times. This is Rob. And like, people need people. Exactly. Have you ever heard that one? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we're, we're social animals. And we are. I think. But except for with one caveat. Yeah. And, and that's this age-old belief, which I completely uh, agree with, that happiness comes from within. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's really hard to form healthy close relationships if you don't feel good about yourself and then there's this other cliche you have to love yourself mm. well you know what I mean, I mean it's extremely important to love you be able to love yourself yeah because it is hard to truly love someone else if you don't love yourself yeah and so the, the better you feel about yourself and the more you actually can accept and love yourself the, the easier it is to form healthy connections with others and and embrace those connections uh you know um, with with all of your heart and that's where you really find you know true love and you know there's there's no substitute for that kind of love in your life and to, for me that's you know that's that's enough to live for on its own look take happiness whenever you can i was searching for something that was everywhere happiness can be derived from any source just look There's nothing too big to get caught up on. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. In this walk of life, we rush to the end. Along the way, we shed youth, we shed naivete, and I believe we also shed our happiness. How can we be like our parents? We ask ourselves now, and then we become them. Because so many of us believe that growing up is to be desensitized to the bliss that surrounds us. But it doesn't have to be that way. Setting goals is dangerous. When we are 7, we want to be 10. When we are 10, we want to be 13. When we are 18, we want to be in college. We want a job. We want a family. We set so many goals and we rush them faster and faster and faster. And we forget that life is the moments lived in between. I love you, Santa! Slow down. And if there's one thing I learned along this journey, when times of darkness arrive because they are inevitable, breathe and focus on your breath. Slow down. As cheesy as it sounds, focusing on your breath grounds you in the now and clears your mind. 
In the words of Dan Harris, when you have one foot in the future and the other in the past, you piss on the present. And from my experience, I, for eight months straight, did nothing but piss on everything around me because I was so caught up in worrying about the future. And if I leave you with one last piece of advice, slow down.